Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve leak code 6, another classic zigzag conversion. I'm surprised it took us this long to solve this one, but it's not super bad even though again it has a ton of dislikes, but it's not the worst problem out there. I've seen some much worse problems than this one. So we're given a string, it says PayPal is hiring. I'm guessing this problem was created at PayPal. And we're told that this is this string is written in a zigzag pattern given an, a second input parameter. So we're given the string and we're given a second parameter, the number of rows. And knowing that, it's gonna be written in a zigzag pattern like this one. By zigzag, this is what they mean. So you start at the top left, right? So we go character by character, P, A, Y, etc. Put the character here. So, you know, this is kind of the shape of the zigzag. This is the ordering that you're gonna read it if you can follow the line that I'm like drawing, right? Like this is kind of what, what they mean by zigzag. And so then when you take this zigzag pattern and read it row by row, so for example, take the first row, we get P-A-H-N, take the second row, we get a bunch of characters, and then take the last row, we get Y-I-R. So if you take them in that order, uh, P-A-H-N, those random characters, Y-I-R, you know, then we get the output. This is the output that we want to return. So basically we're given a string and a number of rows, and then we wanna return that. And if you want to take a look exactly the input output, this first example does that. So let's try to understand this problem and break it down. And instead of using number of rows equals three, I'm actually going to use number of rows equals four. And then uh, the generic solution becomes really obvious, I think, when you look at this example. Okay, so let's take a look at another example. So this is what we just pretty much went over, right? The example with three rows. Let's take a look at the example of four rows, right? So... Uh, this is the input string up above, right? I wrote it in a zigzag pattern. So this is where we put the first character, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and then just continue like that, right? Now, the first thing you should probably think about is how can you actually read the first row, right? Because we're gonna go row by row. Let's read the first row, then read the second row, third, and fourth. So how do we read the first row? Well, the first character in the input string that we're given up above over here, right? The first character is P, right? So that's the first character in the first row, obviously, right? At index zero, basically, right? So now how many spots in this input string all the way at the top, how many spots do we have to jump to get to the, this character that we want, right? We wanna to get to the next character. How many spots do we have to jump? Well, let's just count them, right? There's one, two, three, four, five, and then six to finally get here, right? Uh, is there a way we can determine that, you know, with an algorithm? Well, take a look. We're given four rows, right? So it takes us three, starting from here, starting from top left, it takes us three jumps to get to here. And then it takes us three jumps to get back to the row that we're at, right? So in reality, it's basically, uh, you know, the number of, of uh, jumps that we have to do each time to get to the next character, including if we want to go from this character I, one, two, three, four, five, six, right, to get to this next character in the row, we're going to have to go through uh, the number of rows, four minus one, right, multiplied by two, right, because we're going all the way down and then we're going all the way back up. So that's why we're multiplying by two. So in the string, we're going to start at index zero and then we're going to add six. Then we're going to add six again, you know, to the index to get to the next character. So it's easy to read the first row, but here's where things get a little bit tricky when we get to the second row. So we're at the second row, we're at the first character A, and how are we gonna start here? Well, instead of starting at index zero, we can just start at index one. So we're gonna say string at index one to start at the uh, at this row, right? So that's straightforward. Now, how do we get this entire row of characters? What happens if we do the same thing that we just did? If we go six spots, okay, let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we get here. What if we do it again? One, two, three, four, five, six six so we got three characters in this row but the question is did we miss anything and yeah we did take a look this row has more than three characters right we got these three but we missed this character and we missed this character and why exactly is that well take a look at a zigzag right an individual zigzag is this right the first uh, the first row of the zigzag just has one character, right? And then we have another zigzag here, right? 
it also, the first row just has one character in this individual zigzag, right? The second row actually has two characters in the zigzag. The, uh, the third row also has two characters in the zigzag. The last row, though, is also similar to the first row. It doesn't, it only has one character, right? Only one character in the last row of the zigzag, right? If we want to get the next character of the zigzag, how many spots do we have to jump? So we know for the first spot, we have to jump six spots. For the last spot, we also have to jump six spots because it only has one position in a zigzag, right? If we go one, two, three, four, five, six, we get the next character, right? And that's enough for us to get the bottom row. So the first row and the bottom row can just take six jumps each. And similarly, the, all the other rows can also take six jumps, right? For this, if we take six jumps, we'll get here. So it takes six jumps, we'll get here, but we just have to make sure that we catch these intermediate characters. So for any row that's not the first row and not the last row, we're going to have to get uh, two, we're going to have to get the second character of the zigzag. So how are we going to do that? What's going to be the algorithm for that? Well, it's going to depend on the row number. So let's count the row numbers, zero, one, two, and three. And remember, we're only going to be doing this step, this extra step for the middle rows, not the first row and not the last row. Well, if we're at this spot, right, how do we get the second character to make sure we don't miss it? Well, we're going to take, starting from here, we're going to take one jump, two jumps, three jumps, and then four jumps to get there, right? So is it always going to be four jumps? Well, hold on a second because it's not. So let's take a look at this one. If we're starting here and we don't want to miss the second character, which is this one, right? We will definitely be able to get this one because that'll take exactly six jumps to get here, but we don't want to miss this one in between. So how do we get that? Well, let's count how many jumps is it going to take? One, two jumps. Notice how for this one to get the middle character, it took four jumps. For this one to get the middle character, it took two jumps. So each time it's going to be decreasing by two. Why is it going to be decreasing by two? Well, if you kind of look at the shape of this, it's like a V shape, right? Each time we go down, we're basically measuring the distance, right? Like we're basically measuring the size of the V, right? So so basically it has to do with, you know, generally the size of the V, but if we're just focusing on the numbers, it's going to be decreasing by two each time that we go down. So what we can say is to get the middle character, it's going to take six jumps. In other words, do you remember how we got this six at the beginning? We took four, which is the number of rows, minus one multiplied by Two, right? So this is how we got the got that six value, and each time we're going to be subtracting by two, right? So each time we're going to be subtracting by two, what does that depend on? That depends on which row we're currently at. So we're going to take which row we're at, multiplied by two, and then subtract that value. So this is an R if you can't read it. Sorry about that. So th this value evaluates to six minus two times R which is how we're going to be determining these in-between characters. And that's going to be the entire algorithm. Oh, and one more thing before I forget, we're given a parameter number of rows, right? It could be three, it could be four, it could be whatever. It's never going to be negative, but it could be one. What happens if it's one? What kind of zigzag do we get then? A zigzag that only has one row. Well, it's going to be the exact same as the input string, right? So if we get a zigzag of, you know, number of rows one, we just can return the input string. So that's like pretty much a base case or something like that. Now we can get in the code. Okay, so like I mentioned a moment ago, we can do the base case first of all. Right, so if we just get number of rows equals one, we can just return the string, right? And otherwise, we'll actually have to build the result. So let's build, let's initialize the result to just being an empty string. Then we're going to go through every single row. I'm going to use the character R to indicate row. So for every row in a range, the number of rows that we're given, we're going to be uh, going row by row now, right? So how much are we going to be incrementing by again? Well, for the third time, let me show you the formula. So it's going to be two multiplied by the number of rows minus one. Right, so that's the distance that we're going to be jumping each time, our increment. So now we can actually start going row by row. And we're going to use our index i to just tell us what position we're at in the string. So we're going to start at the at r, right? We're starting not at index 0, but we're starting at index r. Why is that the case? Because row 0 is going to start at index 0. Row 1 is going to start at index 1. Row 2 is going to start at index 2, etc., etc. But we are going to be going until we go out of bounds of the 
a string. So we can put that as the second parameter. And the third parameter is going to be how much are we going to be incrementing each time? Well, we just calculated that above. So we can just pass that in here. So now we're going to be adding the character to the result each time. So whatever character is at index i, go ahead and add it to the result. So and it's, this is the straightforward part. This is what would work perfectly for the first row and the last row. But remember the rows that are in between have an extra value that we don't wanna forget about. So how can we make sure we don't forget about that value? Well, first we'll have to check, are we in, are we in one of the middle rows? So what we'll say is if r is greater than zero and if r is, less than the number of rows minus one, which is the last row. So as long as we're in a middle row, we want to get the uh, extra character and we don't wanna forget about it, but we also wanna make sure that it is in bounds. So first of all, do you remember how we can actually get to that extra character? Well, it's gonna be the current index that we're at plus whatever the incrementer is, right? And minus, two times whatever row that we're currently in, right? Because we know as we go lower and lower in each row, we know the size of the V decreases, right? The size of the zigzag or the V decreases. So it decreases by two each time. So that's why every time we go down each row, we're gonna subtract two times R. So this is the index of that position that we don't wanna forget about, right? That middle character. So before we add it to the result, we just wanna make sure this index is actually in bounds, right? Because technically it could be out of bounds. So we can make sure it's in bounds if it's less than the length of the string. And let me real quick put this on a second line so it's a little bit more readable. And so if this is the case, we can go ahead and add to the result string at this position. So let's just copy paste that into this formula. And that's it, right? So here, this if statement is only gonna execute for the middle rows, not the first row and not the last row. But this is the entire code, right? It's two nested loops. But don't be confused. Just because it's two nested loops does not mean the time complexity is n squared. Because if you look, this loop is gonna execute the number of rows. But this inner loop is where the actual work is happening. How many times is this inner loop gonna execute? Well, it can't possibly execute more times than the number of characters that were given in the input. So the time complexity is actually the size of the string. It's not like we're visiting the same character twice, right? Because our incrementer, our incrementer in this case is not one, remember? This, this could be a really large value. So this loop is actually not super inefficient or anything. So after you're done with all that, we can go ahead and return the result. That's the entire code. I'm gonna run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, it does, it's pretty efficient. So I hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.